Hey, how's it going? This is Loverbolt76, I'm Chad, and today is going to be a real wildcat. We've got the Savage 110 High Country, chambered in 7mm 08 Remington. Alright, let's get after it. Well, before we get too far into this rifle and cartridge, I'd like to give you a little bit of background on myself. So, I was pretty much raised up on the Model 99 Savage. My grandpa collected and only shot Model 99s, at least when I was around. My dad uh, collected and only shot Model 99s. So, it isn't too far of a stretch to see that I was brought up the same way. The first high-powered rifle that I took hunting was a Model 99 Savage chambered in 253,000. Uh, from there, I got a 308 Winchester Model 99 Savage, and that was pretty much it for me. For years, that's all I shot was a Model 99 Savage. I collected them, I shot them, that was it. Then here, oh, it's probably been four or five years ago now. Kind of had an itch to shoot something other than a 308. I think at that time I had four or five 308s, so I was wanting to branch out a little bit, try something new, and uh, so I started looking at bolt guns. And I looked at Browning, I looked at Winchester, uh, Weatherby, but the the one I kept going back to was the Savage, they, with this Accu trigger and this Accu stock on them. Uh, after all, I mean, the Model 99 had always treated me good. I didn't see how their bolt guns would be much worse than that. So uh, I decided to start buying the Model 110s. And this is the second one I purchased. It is the Model 110 Savage High Country, chambered in 7mm 08 Remington. This has been an excellent rifle. I trust this rifle and scope on here as much as I've trusted any gun before. I, I feel very comfortable shooting it from the first day once I got the scope on it, got it sighted in, it has given me literally zero trouble. I've probably put 300 rounds through it at this point and it just just like a, a rifle that I've shot my entire life. So fit fits me perfect. So anyway, that's uh that's a story on how I got to shooting bolt action rifles. At any rate, let's talk a little bit about the cartridge. The 7mm08 started life in the late 50s, I believe, as a Wildcat cartridge. And really, all they did was neck down a 308 and then lengthen the case slightly so that I believe it couldn't be chambered in a 308 rifle on accident. It's pretty hard telling them apart when the two cartridges are side by side. It lived along uh, as a Wildcat cartridge known as the 7mm 308. And then in 1980, uh, Remington picked it up and started producing it and changed the name to 7mm 08 Remington. And it's really been a good cartridge for them ever since. I think it was pretty popular uh, there for a while in the 80s and it kind of died off a little bit and it seems to me like it's starting to get popular again. Um, quite a few rifles chambered in it. And I mean, quite honestly, if you look at the ballistics on it, uh, it carries a little bit more energy and speed than the 308 does. Just slightly smaller from a 30 caliber to a 28 caliber. So um, you're not losing a lot of surface area there on your bullet. And you've got a little bit longer bullet if you're shooting 140s or 150s uh, comparatively. And the... If we take a look at the rifle, this one in particular the high country has a 22 inch stainless steel fluted barrel and which is nice it's a heavier barrel but with that fluting in it it takes a lot of the weight off of there so I think uh, that helps it do pretty good all in all weight wise it weighs eight pounds 
So that's not that's not too bad. Throw throw the scope on there. You've got a nine pound rifle. A little bit on the heavier side. It's not an ultra light, but I don't mind packing it around all day. It's really not a heavy rifle. Uh, you've got your uh, four round detachable magazine on there, and it works very good. I know some people complain. You, you have to get one thing clear between the Axis and the 110 there are many differences and I've heard people complain about the box magazine on the Axis but all of these 110s you've got to look that is a steel magazine this whatever they have here I'm not sure if that's steel I've never put a magnet on it but it's solid it's strong uh, it has never given me a problem one cycling shells through this thing it feeds great i've literally never had one problem with it um like all the savages you've got the accu trigger and the accu stock on it this one i have a leupold vx 3i i think it's like a three by ten power if i'm not mistaken uh three and a half by ten pretty decent scope i know it's not Leupold's best but it's got the duplex uh, reticle in there and I mean for me I don't have to have the biggest and the best this is a nice scope the optics are great on it it's worked flawless for, for me it's never moved like say I've probably put I don't know around 300 rounds through it I imagine and I've never had an issue with it at all I think about uh, Ron Spomer did an episode on uh, ultralight arms he had chambered in 284 Winchester and uh, that was an ultralight rifle if I remember right that thing weighed five or six pounds with a scope on it but uh, this is a little bit heavier of course than that is but chambered in that 7mm08 um, I think that and the 284 are dang near identical to one another um, which I've got a 284 as well in, in the Model 99. And uh, I think we'll probably do that on the next episode. But, um, man, I shooting the two cartridges, I've, I've shot these this and that 284 side by side. And they, they shoot so similar to one another. But uh, at any rate, I think we'll take this thing out to the range and let you guys see how it does shoot but before we go out to the range i would like to get maybe like an online petition going maybe it's just me but i would like to change the name of this cartridge to just the 708 can we all just start referring to it as a 708 or the 708 rim or something like that i mean you've got the the seven millimeter remington magnum magnum Everybody just calls that the seven seven rim mag or or the seven mag. Can we all just agree to start calling the seven m m o eight the seven o eight rim? Even if we can still give Remington credit for it, that's fine. All right, I'm all set up at a hundred yards, ready to go here. Today we're shooting this these Winchester 140 grain ballistic silver tips. This rifle seems to like these quite a bit, putting some pretty tight groups out there with it, so we'll see how it does.
Well, that's not too bad for getting the barrel warmed up. Looks like out of five shots there, I don't know which one the first one was, but got this is definitely an inch group here. Got these outliers here, but we'll measure them later, see what we have. Let's go out to the two, three, and 400 yard side of things. All right. Okay, well, I'm set up for 200 yards, and I uh, think I'll get my drone up in there, take a couple warm up shots at 200, move out to 300, and then 400. So we'll, uh, we'll see how we do. We're just going to try that middle one for starters. Well, that'll work there. Again, this is at 200 yards. See if we can hit that small one. All right. Well, that seems to be pretty good. Let's move out to three, see how we do. All right, we're at 300 yards. We've got a pretty good breeze coming at us here. Zero to hundred, so let's see. There we go. I was holding about, I don't know, 10 inches, a foot high on that one. We'll move to that medium sized one. Alrighty, got that figured out, I think. Okay, I got that drone out there at 400 yards. We're gonna hold about two feet high and a foot to the left. We've got a pretty stiff breeze left to right. Let's see if we can hit anything. Maybe I'm too high. Sounds like I'm hitting it, but I don't know. I tell you what, why don't you go ahead and like and subscribe to the video? I'd sure appreciate it. All right, thank you.